Despite the increased number of ICD recipients and the frequent need for device upgrading and or uh, occurrence of lead malfunction, the optimal approach to managing abandoned leads remains kind of in debate. So there is data that's necessary, and we have some here from the NCDR. The National Cardiovascular Data Registry is going to provide us with some insight, and I am with Dr. Emily Zeitler, who is from Duke University Medical Center in Durham. And this is outcomes associated with lead abandonment versus lead extraction strategies for revision of sterile leads. And this is an NCDR analysis. First, why did you do this study? Um, well, we did this study because, uh, as you said, there are a lot of reasons why uh, leads ha leads need to be revised for some reason or another. Um, we're not talking about infected leads right. for which there is really clear evidence that those need to come out. Um, but for leads that have been recalled or malfunctioning that can't be fixed with non-invasive strategies like reprogramming, et cetera, um, it's unclear whether those leads should just be abandoned and replaced with a new lead or if the lead should be completely extracted and replaced with a new lead. There are, there's really strong opinions on both sides it's of this just debate. It's like two camps. It, there really is. I mean, it's, it's pretty uh, strong voices on both sides with really good arguments. Um, but, you know, data speaks. And so we were looking for, um, and, and there, I should say there are some single center studies or smaller studies that have looked at um, comparing these two strategies, but there really wasn't any multi-center center, um, high quality uh, data to compare the outcome. So we were, we were set out to answer that question. I found one prior analysis of 58 patients, and I think that was 2011. So I think it is time to look at something a little bit bigger. Uh, so let's talk about the study. You started with a fairly large database. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Yeah, the NCDR um, these days captures almost all uh, ICD uh, related procedures and actually a lot of pacemaker related procedures as well. Um, and starting in 2010, the uh, data collection form was revised so that it could capture procedures that involve only leads. So even if the um, generator isn't removed or replaced or upgraded, uh, we still now are capturing those lead only procedures. So that's where we started our collection. So you started with this large database and then you were able to come up, essentially come up with a one-to-one -one analysis. That's right. We, um, the, we had very large numbers, around almost 50,000 patients from the NCDR. Um, and then we, there are, we know that there are some factors that play a big role in outcomes from revision of leads. Um, for example, patient age is a big one. Um, provider experience, so operator experience is a big one. Um, center volume is a big one. So we included those along with lots of other characteristics, patient characteristics, facility characteristics. Um, and even lead characteristics um, in order to do the best job possible of approximating a randomized trial. We know there will never be a randomized trial right. of this, so we tried to approximate that with propensity score matching. So in doing that, we did have a lot of, we, we did have a fair number of patients drop out of our analysis um, in order to get as close matching as possible. So what did you find? Well, we found, um, we, we really had two separate cohorts. Um, in the first cohort, we looked at, which was a much larger cohort, uh, w around 25,000 patients, we looked at um, outcomes in the hospital, so procedure-related events. Um, and to no one's surprise, we found that extraction procedures are related with um, are associated with higher complication rates. Um, and that's, that's well known, well documented, um, and makes logical sense. The, um, uh, those pr procedure-related events includes mortality. So mortality was significant, statistically significantly higher in the extraction group. And then a number of other important um, complications like chemothorax, tamponade, um, need for another revision procedure. That was pretty clear. And our um, complication rates matched what we see in the literature. But then we took that group and we wanted to get longer term outcomes. So we matched those patients who were Medicare enrolled. We um, we it took out the, the subgroup of Medicare patients and matched those patients one-to-one, -one, extraction and abandonment. And then we were able to look at six-month and one-year outcomes, including mortality and, and complications. And interestingly, we found that once you look past the discharge from the hospital, the differences seemed to sort of even out. So there weren't a lot of differences once you got past that discharge. Um, now this, those findings only apply to the Medicare population, but, but um, that's the group that is often um, the, the patients that were making these tough decisions. Right. Um, so, so, you know, it, pretty, it, it appears that they're both good strategies, and it depends a lot on patient factors, some of which we couldn't capture in our analysis. I mean, there was nothing that hit statistical significance, if I recall, from your That's correct. Paper. That's correct. Some of that has to do with our, um, 
our, uh, the event rates being relatively low. Um, right. Once we got down to our Medicare population matched one to one, we were down to about 1,200 patients, um, and so our event rates were, were pretty low. Um, it is, you know, worth noting that there was no um, no complication that was more frequent in the abandonment group, um, but none of those were statistically significant. Now, exactly one year ago, as we stand here in November of 2015 at AHA, there was a survey that was published in uh, Europe that took a look at extraction versus abandonment, and what they found was that about one-third of, of the cases that there was abandonment, and two, about two-thirds they had uh, the extraction. Does that number sound about right for this country, too? Yeah, I, th I think so. Um, there, there's a lot that goes into those kinds of considerations. Um, you know, age plays a really big role. I think right. the older the patient, the more likely you are to abandon a lead uh, because your risk of longer-term complications, like needing an extraction in the future, goes you know goes down once um, you're dealing with an older patient. And also, what kind of lead are, are we talking about? Um, some leads, uh, there there is some evidence that certain leads are associated with with higher complication rates if they are abandoned. Um, and so, and also, patient preferences plays a big role. Um, okay, that's true. Yeah, and we we didn't capture that in our analysis, and I've actually not seen anything out there about that either. So it's something that should be considered. I mean, that, that plays a big role. Um, would you, do you want to take your risk up front or, or, you know? Well, they also noted that for centers that weren't really that experienced, it was like 100% abandonment. <laughs> and that's the right decision for, you know, for an operator with no experience. We know that plays a big role in, in patient outcomes. So if a patient or a provider doesn't have access to an experienced extractor, abandonment probably is the right decision. So for the two camps that keep arguing with each other, your finding essentially is if you have to abandon lead, the data look pretty solid that it's going to be a, a comparable outcome long yeah, term. Yeah, I think I'd agree with that up to up to our to a year. That's when we right. we look back to a year, and there is um, really uh, strong arguments that the risks of abandonment actually play out over a much longer period of time. Um, that you know, for example, the need for future extraction, the risks of extraction go up with the longer the lead's been in place. So I think there's a strong argument to be made that really five year, ten year outcomes are the really important ones, but we don't have those data. Um, and then secondly some of the complications from abandonment aren't well captured in the claims data that we had. So for example, uh, venous thrombosis or venous occlusion, I should say, um, is, a, is a risk of lead abandonment. And that's, you know, especially if it's asymptomatic, we can't capture that in Medicare claims. So it remains to be seen if, you know, somebody can conduct a really robust randomized trial, <laughs> uh, we can really answer the question. But th these are the best data we have. Well, I think it's a great paper, and thank you very much, because we have a variety of NCDR papers that are being presented here at AHA 15. So please check Cardio Source World News and Cardio Source World News Interventions for a variety of uh, NCDR data. And for uh, Dr. Zeitler and for CSWN, I'm Executive Editor Rick McGuire.